Here is Ole, uh, Ole, and he's going to tell us how, why he's so much smarter than the rest of us. No. Have fun. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, l I did something last year similar to this, and people came up and asked me afterwards, so I have to clarify this year. I'm not actually actively recruiting for these people. Uh, I just enjoy the challenges they post on their site, and they're often well put together. So uh, if you go to this link, I am recruiting. So. There you go. Okay, so let's go. This is the recruitment challenge that they put up uh, this spring for some job. And I've already downloaded it, so let's go. So we've got a PCAP and we've got a README text that has some hints. I won't show it to you because, well, there's just hints in there. So we start up Wireshark with a PCAP. And the first thing we always do is we go to the statistics and protocol hierarchy to get an overview of what's in the PCAP file. So as we see, there's only TCP data in there. There's 98.8% data. So Wireshark dissectors haven't found the protocol. And the rest is HTTP. OK, cool. So we know what to expect. So we have some, we take the first connection, follow the TCP stream. We've got some HTTP traffic. So okay, we've got a directory listing for client.py, crypto.txt. OK, interesting. We've got to the next stream. Follow that. OK, so somebody tried to get favicon. OK, that's just a browser doing stuff. So we get to the next stream. Follow that. OK, so somebody's getting the client.py file. OK, cool. We can probably just cut and paste that. Just cut and paste the file. Uh, there we go. Let's see if we can put that into a file over here. Oh, no, we can't. Uh, what am I doing? OK. OK, fuck that. Let's just save it. OK, I, I, okay now I know what I'm doing. I'm an idiot. There we go. I stopped the whole Wireshark instance, and now it's fucked. Oh. Yeah, as you can see, I'm very good at preparing these things. So now I don't know what to do exactly, because the whole thing is hung. <sighs> oh, fudge. Do I really need to do this? OK, I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I need to do this. Uh, yeah, I suck. At least it should boot somewhat quickly, and I can have a beer. OK, so remember, don't control Z and forget to run BG or whatever. That's not a good idea, especially not in a VM, apparently. Oh, what the fuck? OK. so. As you can see, what Hannah said earlier about me being smart was actually a very you know, astute observation. It was, or as we call it, a big joke. Come on. Yeah, so this talk is going to be a bit longer than planned, but I, I, I promise you it's going to be worth it, because it, it's a fun challenge. It's pretty. Once we get. The one I'm not recruiting for, or the other one? The challenge. Uh, yeah, I can, I can kind of remember what was in the README file, so I can probably tell you about that. The README file says something about, here's a PCAP. Look at the traffic in it, and uh, it asks you a few questions. So the first one is like, what color is the ball? Second is, what does the playing field look like? And the third is, what does the playing field look like in Cuddler? And the fourth one is, what's the high score? So then you can kind of guess what's going on here. The, the data we saw in the, in the PCAP file that wasn't HTTP is probably going to be some kind of game. So we probably got this client.py, which is the uh, client part of the game. And it's probably connecting to a server instance and playing some kind of game. Uh, and all we have is the network traffic. So what we, can, uh, what we have to do is kind of reconstruct the game session. 
Okay, so that was what. Was, thank you, Ian. That was in. That was what was in the the readme file. So, okay, let's see if we've got everything here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's not do this the wrong way. So, all right. It wasn't the first one. It was the second one. Okay, so this time I'm going to do it the easy way, which is just to save it. Well, no, it's not Nikon, it's client.py. What are you talking about? I've, uh, thank you for your help, now go away. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the next uh, stream in the file. We might as well save that while we're here. So follow TCP stream, and we see, okay, this is interesting. Kind of looks like this kind of looks like ANSI uh, control codes. We've got some metadata there. Let's look at the upstream. Okay, so this is probably what the client's sending. So we've got command, set player name, Kale, input, right, left, right, left. It looks like game, right? Game input. And this is what the server is sending down. So this is probably the stuff we should be looking at. Uh, I'm actually going to save both. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save this. Uh, I should do it. And then we go to the last stream in the file. I know it's the last stream because I've done this once before. And we'll look at that. Okay, so not as much data. Looks pretty much the same. We'll save that too. Uh, that was up and down. Oop, can't spell. Right. Okay. What? Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm stupid. Yeah, there we go. That should do it. Let's just quit this. And let's see if we've got the stuff here. Yeah, okay. Just make... Yep, looks good. Next, we'll take a look at this client. So just get rid of all this shit. Yep, so now we've got the Python file. So we just have a look at it. Uh, it does some socket, terminal IO, RC4 crypto. Got something here that says render, and it reads data, and it decodes stuff, and it prints it. Got some send packet player input. OK. OK, let's, let's modify this to actually replay the session. So instead of a socket, we'll have just open the file. Just probably just to be safe, we can do that. Yeah. Okay, so instead of socket commands on the or methods on the socket, we should probably put file stuff in there. So, yeah, we don't want to receive stuff. We want to probably data equals read line instead because it looks like text output. So, and then we have the send. Uh, yeah, then we, we don't want to send anything to the file, the upstream we don't care about in this instance, which are replaying. So, there we go. Let's try it. Client. We saw the stream four was kind of uh, a bit smaller, so we'll use that one. Oops, I'm an idiot, apparently. OK, so there's shit after that as well. And just remove that. OK, ah, enter XOR key. I skipped through this when browsing client.py, so let's just put something. Enter long. OK, fair enough. What's your name? OK, yeah, cool. Oh. Interesting. Oh, there we go. So it's actually playing the game. It's replaying the network traffic in the client. So now we can answer the first question, what color is the ball? The ball is blue. Cool. Uh, you saw that, right? I think it actually looks better on the projection because it's flickering like hell on the, my screen. OK, uh, so let's have a closer look at the client. Apparently, there's some data there that uh, could be decoded correctly, but you didn't see a playing field. You just saw the ball and it was bouncing around, but it wasn't bouncing against anything. So probably that's in the, the encrypted parts. Okay, so we've got a long XOR. I'm going to say, okay, RC4 and long XOR, we don't care about that right now. 
we want to focus on this XOR thing because it's taking the input and it's XORing it against just one byte of an XOR key. So the first thing it asked us for was actually just one byte. Fair enough. Uh, then it's checking the MD5 uh, checksum of the data. And if the decoded checksum isn't, uh, doesn't match the one in the network traffic, uh, then let's actually print that. So let's print, maybe we'll print uh, the MD5. Let's just print something in before, like fail. Yeah, and exit. So now it should, now the program should exit once we find something that wasn't properly decoded. Before it would just ignore it, but now it will exit the program. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay. So nothing's happening. It's doing something. It's giving, oh, oh it's giving us the error down there. Uh, let's just, I saw there was some uh, exception handling here. So let's just get rid of the exception handling. I think the exception handling was swallowing our stuff. Okay, so it's starting the game and it says fail. Okay. Let's just check what that was. Yeah, so let's look. It says encoding XOR. Yeah, so we know what we're doing. We're doing the first level, which is decoding the single byte XOR. So this stuff that it spit out, we probably want to put in a file so we can analyze it. So let's do uh, with open bin uh, write uh, as f, f dot write, and what was the decoded stuff called? Oh, actually, let's take the actual contents of the buffer. So this is just the stuff that's in the JSON field that was called buff. I'll write that to the file. Okay. Okay. Mm, no. Am I stupid? Ah, oh, that's right. I'm a stupid idiot. Okay. I've done this so many times, actually, just not running the thing and checking for the output. Okay, so let's run the game. And this time, when it finds the data, it should dump a file for us. There we go. Okay, so this was the encoded stuff that was in the file. So let's analyze this. So this tool isn't actually in Kali, so I'm kind of cheating, but you can get it easy enough on, on GitHub. Uh, so let's see, what was the syntax? I think it's just run it on it, and it does some, yeah, OK. We actually, this is stupid. We know that this is just a one byte XOR. So we can probably just brute force this. So RM crypto, and let's run it again, because it's going to ask us for it. Uh, I didn't show you perhaps that, but it, it saves the crypto keys and crypto.txt. Okay. So let's start brute forcing this. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, I got it. It was A. So that was easy. The first level easy. So now don't applaud that. Come on, that was luck. Uh, so, okay, so the next, next question in the readme file was what's the. Oh, I shouldn't have exited. I should have sh I should have run that. Uh, the, the let's see. The the first question was, what does the playing field look like? Yeah, it looks like that. Uh, the second question was, what does it look like in color? So probably this long XOR thing is going to be the color information. Uh, no. Oh, rather, that's right. Because <sighs> I'm a stupid idiot. Okay. Didn't I just say that we didn't care about that? So I. Would Put a continue in there. OK, so we've solved the first one. Now we're going to this one, the long XOR one. So run the client. Yes, yes. And we've got the wrong key, so it's going to fail on the MD5 check, some check. And it's going to uh, give us the data in a file called bin. Uh, there we go. So this looks a bit different. Uh, it's not as regular, but you can see it kind of repeats. It got re 
it's got repeating patterns, so the XOR key can't be that long. Okay, so one thing we can do on this now is run the XOR tool like I showed you earlier. It's going to do some statistical analysis, and it's going to tell us that the repeating pattern here is probably 12 bytes long. So the key is probably going to be 12, 12 bytes long. Okay, so that's interesting. What more can we do? Well, we can look at the rest of the data, because there was something unencrypted and there was some uh, that we just decrypted, and it was mostly this ANSI stuff, right, to draw terminal uh, stuff. So we can probably uh, guess that the first bytes are going to be something like 1B uh, bracket something something, 1B bracket something. Okay. So let's just guess and let's see what happens. So take the key, 1B bracket, just say 1 colon 1H, 1B bracket, something like that. That's not 12 bytes yet, but let's just peek into the first bit of the uh, encrypted binary, and let's see what it looks like. Uh, actually, let's run that through the hex editor as well, uh, or hex dump. And did I do something wrong? Uh, oh, that's right. That was wrong, wrong command. There we go. Ah, interesting. Okay, so this looks like text. That's good. Because as everybody knows an XOR operation is inverse of the thing and the bot. So if you guess the plain text, then you can get the key out, right? So this looks like it might be the text of the key. It doesn't look quite what I would expect it to be. If you saw the name of the game was something like Anti Doe, anybody remember Revenge of Doe? Arkanoid 2, that's right. So, Arhanoid, mm, maybe we're onto something here. Okay, so let's put that in the thing. Actually, no, no, let's put that in the key field here. So, let's try Arkanoid. And we know that it was probably going to be 12 bytes the key. So, this is just eight. So, let's put in four more. Uh, let's look at that. Oh, it looks better. So we've got our 1B, uh, we've got 2 colon 1H, 1B bracket, and then we've got some crap here. This, this, that's not a correct ANSI code. So the XXX, we knew that wasn't going to work. So that's what we've got to figure out what's in there. It is something that's kind of text-y, and we put in text. Let's put in numbers and see if that matches better. That matches better because we're expecting numbers to show up after the 1B and uh, bracket. Okay, so now we're going to cheat and we're going to do this. Uh, let's see, how do you do this? Yeah, here we go. We're going to ask Google because when in doubt, you ask Google. So we ask Google about Arkanoid. So we've got Arkanoid, we've got four bytes after, the probably going to be numbers because that gave us numbers in the output and we're looking for numbers after the bracket sign to make a valid ANSI code. And if my internet connection was working, we would get the Google hit, which says that Arkanoid was released in 1986. Okay, so we're going to guess. We're going to guess that the numbers that we need to put in here are 1986. Okay, let's see. 1986. Ah, there we go. That looks better. That looks like some good ANSI codes. So we've got 1C, 5B. Ah, OK, wait, don't applaud yet. Apparently, this isn't correct, because if you look at this, you've got, it's supposed to be 1B bracket, and we've got 1A bracket over here at the last position. This is 12 bytes. This is the key length. So this is OK. We know that because it, the key repeats. So that's arc uh, and again. But the last byte wasn't correctly decoded, so that's 1A, it should be 1B. Okay, so we're off by one. That should be easy to solve. Just put in there. Ah, 1B, that's good. Okay. Arkanoid 1987. Oops, I'm too used to writing my own year, date of birth. There we go. And let's run the tool again. Uh, actually, no. Uh, let's have a look at... No, let's run the tool. We want to see the output. One thing you can do to look at the output is, of course, just look at whatever comes out. Ah. But let's run the tool because that's more fun. So Python client, uh, let's see, what was it? Stream, three down. And three wasn't the one I used before. I used four, stream four before. So let's check if they have the same keys. 
in both streams, both play sessions? They should have it. I mean, come on. Okay, let's see. Oh, play already. Enter your name already, slow player. Ah, there we go. What's that? Uh, that's me being stupid, I guess. No, that's actually an error in the JSON input. I can't decode the JSON. Okay. So, I forgot about that. That's something they probably put in there intentionally to screw with you. So some of these lines are actually, there we go. Uh, I forgot about that, sorry. So now we know the colors. So that's just, that, that just leaves the last level, which was what is the high score. That's what the readme said. So let's have a look at the client again. Uh, don't worry about stream three. Uh, it is the same keys. If you remove the faulty lines uh, that have like crap in, in the JSON encoding, then it will work. Just trust me on that. Okay, so the last level was RC4 encrypted. Okay, RC4 is actually a real cipher. Whatever people tell you about it being broken, we're not gonna break RC4 with only like a handful of messages that won't work. But we can have a look at this. It's creating a new instance of this ARC4 class, it's using the key, and it's decrypting the buffer that was base64 encoded. Okay, so one thing that's very, very absent here is any kind of message IV or something like that. So it's actually using the same key to decrypt every single message. So since RC4 is a stream cipher, this basically means this thing is creating a really long XOR key that it's decrypting the message with, just like our long XOR here. It's just that it doesn't need to repeat because it can extend however far it wants. So the RC4 algorithm is just a, 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 a generator of a very long XOR key stream. And since we're actually encrypting or decrypting every message with the same key, it's gonna generate the same key stream, which means that we now have several messages encrypted with the same long XOR key stream. Okay, that's bad. So we can probably work with that. But we're not gonna use the client for that. We're gonna have a look at what's actually in here. We wanna see how many messages, for example, we have. So let's grab for RC4 in stream whatever down, uh, stream whatever, whatever. Uh, okay, let's pipe that through sort unique. Ah, uh, you see, there's only like six different messages that are unique. Uh, so let's have a look at these. Let's put these in, okay, I'm gonna do that, blah, 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 rc4.txt. What am I doing for time? I've already made, okay, yeah, I rebooted once, so I'm gonna take more time. Uh, yeah, so we've got something, oh, this is interesting. We've got two hashes here that look the same, but the messages are different. That's probably one of those JSON encoding errors. Uh, so I'm just gonna guess that one of these is wrong. Uh, and what I can do is actually I can, I, I know that number two and three are wrong, so that's cool. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I'm gonna do this like the old fashioned stupid way, which is uh, 78, no, 76, yeah, there we go, 76, oops. 76, uh, or actually 77. So I'm just gonna remove all the JSON stuff. No, actually, that's stupid. That's really, really stupid. That's really, really stupid. I'm gonna do this instead. Uh, uh, to, sorry, I should have prepared this. I haven't actually done this thing uh, live or anything before. So we're gonna run through we're gonna get rid of that annoying sleep so it actually plays through the thing faster. And we're gonna dump out all the RC4s. So instead of doing this stuff, we're just gonna take the decoded, JSON decoded base64 decoded data. Okay, that's what we want. And we're gonna put that in a file. That's, that's all we wanna do. So let's see, and the file name, we can use perhaps the hash as the file name, so we get one, ha one file per thing. Uh, and we wanna, yeah, there we go. 
So that would probably work. Let's see. Uh, let's take the... What was it? Yeah, uh, RC4, that was it. So Python, extract, RC4. Remember, I grepped for RC4 through the stuff, so we've only got the RC4 lines in there. So let's see if it actually spits out anything. It doesn't. Did I do something stupid? No? OK. We've got four of them there. Is that enough? Actually, uh, let's do this. Uh, how many are there? 32 characters, right? So. Uh, this is really unrehearsed. I'm really sorry. Uh, LS. Five grab and I should probably do it. And let's see if I'm stupid. Yes, I'm stupid. Do that's right. Thanks. Thank you, audience. You're you're great. Um, am I being really stupid here or? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, egrep. Sorry about that. Thank you. Audiences are great. I love audiences. Okay, so, uh, okay, so let's do that and let's put it into a file. We'll call it C for whatever and make sure there's a freaking character term between each of them. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what we've got in C. And I'm a stupid idiot again. I meant to do something else. Does anybody know the syntax to just get at the thing in, just to get the thing in just hex? Do I have to revert to Python or whatever? Uh, no, continuous hex dump C. There we go. So X is the C. There we go. Oh, fuck you. Okay, so this, this is not the way I solved it the first time, but let's see. Oh, fuck. Okay, let's see if this is right. This is wrong. Why am I being such an idiot today? Yeah, that's plain. That's not what I wanted. What was what I wanted? Can somebody help me? No? The hell is PS? Plain? Plain? Okay. I'm, I'm gonna do, okay, I'm gonna do the, since I've wasted enough of your time already, I'm gonna do the whole, I've prepared this earlier thing. You know, like a good TV chef. So, let's see. Uh, okay, it was in here. Okay, so basically what I did was, I got those, uh, RC4 encoded uh, messages out. I put them in a file and I call it C, I think. There we go. And if we look at the file, we can see that, ah, okay, so the messages are increasing in length, right? So let's have a look again at uh, what they were. Uh, okay, so they were the high score things, okay? And we had lots of them redrawing the screen, so, but we only had a few that were unique. So basically what we can guess is that what happened was that the player played a game and the high score got updated. So the high score table got updated and then he played a new game and that's where we get a new uh, crypto text for the high score message because the high score message is drawing the high score table, right? And the uh, reason why it's increasing in length is because the high score table is getting bigger. Okay, so we've, we're getting somewhere. When we look at these, we can see that the beginning is always the same, 
And if the beginning is always the same and we XOR these things together to try to get to the plain text, it's just going to be zeros. So we can probably safely ignore that. Uh, I'm not going to do that because, like I said, I'm going to stick with the thing I prepared earlier. So I wrote a small program. I'm sorry, this is kind of a cop out, but I wrote a small program. Can you actually see this? I've been working with the wrong um, font size all along. Uh, yeah, so basically what I do is I read in the crypto texts and then I guess what the plain text might be. Since it's a high score table and we know what the player entered as their player name, Kalle, we can guess that Kalle would probably show up in the high score table after he gets a high score. So then we can just run it through the crypto text that we have and see if we find a match for Kalle. So what I do is I put in crib. Cribs. Let's put Kale. Kale. There we go. You remember it said Kale in the PCAP? I can show you if you not if you don't believe me. It says it says Kale. And actually player one in the next one. So I either Kale or player one is gonna work as a crib. But we'll use Kale. So we're going to run our little program to run Kalle, just slide it along the whole crypto text and see if we find something that looks uh, reasonable. Uh, actually, sorry, I, I've skipped one step here. I'm, I'm really bad at explaining this, and I didn't prepare, so I'm, I'm, you, you'll have to bear with me. I'm sorry. The reason why these are uh, expanding in length is that we're adding stuff, and we can actually tell where we're adding stuff when we're looking at this thing that looks similar all the way over here somewhere. And then we can see that that's uh, where the crypto six start to differ. So that means that's probably where we're inserting new data. Because once we get new data, uh, XOR with the same key stream, we're going to get a different crypto text, right? So that's probably where we're inserting stuff. So let's just pretend that we know that that's where they're inserting the new high score. So let's, let's say Kalle gets the high score. So he gets on the top of the table, he gets inserted first, and then the crypto text gets longer because he's inserted in the middle of the crypto text there somewhere. Okay. So what we're doing here is that we're uh, expecting these bytes here somewhere where the crypto text start to differ to be Kalle XOR with the key. So if we take Kalle, XOR it with this, we'll get the key, and we'll use the key on the next message, okay? And check what comes out if we use the key that we got by using Kalle as a crib to recover the key stream of that small portion of one message on the next message, because we know they're using the same key stream. Okay, so now I explain what I'm doing. Sorry about that, I should have prepared this much better. Uh, I, shouldn't have three, I shouldn't have had three beers before either. Uh, okay, um, there we go. Okay, so we're looking at different indexes here into the uh, message. So we're sliding Kalle along to see if we get something that matches the next message. So if the message is zero, it's going to be, if the message is the same like we saw in the beginning, we're just going to see Kalle drop out because we're XORing with zero. Uh, so let's go down a bit and we'll see. Kale, 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 kale. Eh, that's the first thing that actually looks reasonable. If we guess, if we look at this, uh, grep score, uh, stream, uh, we'll see that the score is actually printed in a separate message. So if we do this, if we just look at the scores, uh, there we go. We can see the scores progressing here, and we can see what score Kalle got. So if we look for... We can see that, oh, here we go. So the score was increasing in hundreds up to 1,000, and then it got back to zero again. So Kalle probably got score 1,000 before the next game started. Okay, so 1,000. Then we can actually extend our crib a bit. So if we just guess... And again, this was a lot of trial and error when I did it the first time, of course. Just guess that it's going to be 1,000 and then Kalle as the high, in, that's going to be printed in the high score table. So now we've got a bit of longer crib, and we're going to do the same thing, see if it still makes sense. Ah, there we go. 
Okay, so that's another score, and it's something that looks like a name Bernard. I'm going to guess it's Bernard. So I'm just going to yoink that. I'm going to put that in crib, cribs instead. And out would probably pop Kalle. If Bernard is correct, Kalle should pop out, right? So it's, it's the inverse of the thing with the stuff. So, um, ah, yeah, there we go, zero, zero, Kalle. And then we see there's an ANSI code after Kalle. Okay, so now we can keep doing this. So we just take a longer crib, put it in here. You know, just keep doing this. And it gets a bit longer each time, right? So what we're actually doing here is that we got two messages. And they've got the same data in it, but they're misaligned in the key stream. So what we're doing is that we're kind of ping-ponging between the two key streams. So of course, I built a program that does that. So it kind of solves it. Uh, if you want to read up on this, there's probably some better description on how to do it. If you, it's called a slide attack because the uh, plain text are uh, slid kind of against each other. So uh, basically, I do the same thing. I just take the crypto texts. I read the crib and the offset of the crib text, and I use that to solve the first cryptogram, and then I use the output of that to solve the next one, and then back again, and so forth. So just what I showed you with the previous program, just it's automated and just more pretty. So let's see if that works. Oh, I should check if we have the right, th right input first. Uh, yeah, so that this is the hex of the thing that we got out when we did the previous program a couple of times. Uh, so it should just work. Yeah, there we go. So it's crosswise solving those until we get the whole message. We don't get the whole message. We don't get the start of the message because that was the same in all the messages. But we get from this, which is probably the first high score. So uh, this is the second message. And we don't get the end of that, but we get the end of it in the first message, which says the email address to uh, send the solution to. Uh, and yeah, so that's pretty much the high score table here, uh, or at least the end of it, uh, end of the message, which tells us what we want to know, pretty much. So that's the thing I wanted to show you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm sorry for taking up too much time and being a jerk. I'm